the last That Vegan Teacher video and then and then it's over and then it's done. So this is going to be focused on criticism, the criticism I have of That Vegan Teacher, Miss Katie and her platform. I criticized her some throughout the other um, videos, the other first two or three videos, but this is going to be focused on that and very in-depth. So yeah, let's, let's do it. Before getting into specifics, I want to talk about emotional versus objective arguments and emotional harm. As a consequentialist, I weigh one harm against others. If somebody has hurt feelings, but it spares an innocent animal a life of suffering, it's a net good. Now, obviously, if the hurt feelings can be avoided, then that would be the best option. But if trying to walk on eggshells means fewer animals are saved, well then, it makes sense to be more controversial in order to draw more attention to animal agriculture and to ultimately save lives. Anyone who believes it is inherently wrong to hurt people's feelings in order to save billions of animals from excruciating suffering just because they're not human is speciesist and I think really needs to examine their biases before criticizing vegans for being offensive. On the other hand, if you feel that that vegan teacher, she's doing more damage basically than good. Yeah, I, I would probably guess the same. I can't prove it. I can point to evidence strongly suggesting that her overall persona is less effective than a more compassionate, understanding, less dogmatic one, but I can't at all prove that her overall approach is a net negative. Only that I strongly feel that it is, which um, it's not very useful. It is important for vegans to be able to stand up and say, I'm vegan, I disagree with that. And obviously there's a lot of that in this case, which is good. You know, I think it shows that we're not so tribalistic that we can't criticize other people because they're vegan, right? I don't think that's good to just, well, they're vegan, so I'm not gonna criticize anything they, they do or say. But what's lacking, I think, when it comes to that vegan teacher is valid, in-depth criticism. I think the biggest problem people have with that vegan teacher is that she comes across as insensitive. Her I can't breathe video is possibly the best example, especially since she posted it so soon after his death. That hurt a lot of people's feelings, again, particularly for the timing. There is a cultural norm, at least in the US, and I, I, think, I think most places really, that as an outsider, you don't joke about or really reference a sensitive event for some period of time after it happens. There's no set time, obviously, but like right after is pretty gauche. I think there is some basis for this in terms of um, the hurt it could cause family members and even the dead themselves. I mean, you know, we wouldn't want our like tragic death to be used to support something we don't agree with right? Whether or not you believe people should be offended by the song or anything like it, I don't think that people who are offended, I don't think those feelings can just be dismissed. Now, my objective criticism of all this is that she doesn't seem to care that she's hurting people's feelings, like, like not at all. And this actually isn't surprising given her sort of um, ethical framework. She's not a consequentialist, at least not consistently. She's a fan of deontological ethics. She's a fan of people like Gary Francione. I've talked about Francione before. She confirmed this. She, if y'all remember from the iNabber video, my suspicion about her animal products in her body comment. She's not really vegan because if she thinks it's okay for, for her boyfriend, who she's going to kiss, to put his saliva with dead animals into her body. That it had some sort of deontological basis. To be fair, it could also be a more like Francione, dogmatic, just humans don't eat animal parts, consequence, context, doesn't matter, we just don't, period. She confirms that in her response. Yes, I was referring more to Gary Francione type thing. It was a philosophical kind of thing. So in her worldview, things are either valuable and right, no value at all or negative value and wrong. There are not any gradations. In deontology, a wrong cannot be justified by a right. So there is no accountability for complex actions. So to be consistent with that view, she has to say, she has to believe that hurt feelings are of no moral consequence at all. Otherwise, she could not advocate for veganism at the cost of hurting somebody's feelings since ends cannot justify the means. Within that deontological context and, and assuming that she's like consistent and has thought about this at all, trying to convince people to go vegan is the only thing of value here. It doesn't matter how many people's feelings get hurt, even if no one actually goes vegan. 
conveniently, even the consequence of turning people off of veganism doesn't factor in for a deontologist either. The blame of that lies solely on the person who is put off. It's only on them for eating meat and violating their duty not to. The meta-ethics she supports literally leaves her no way to course correct. There's no reason to course correct, right? She's promoting veganism. She's doing everything she needs to do. While I can't agree to disagree with someone who has really thought about the consequences of their form of activism and whose intuitions tell them they're probably doing more good than harm, even if those intuitions are different from my own, with that vegan teacher, I can't. Her only metric of like moral success is views. As long as she's getting views, as long as she's getting people's attention, that's, that's good. She's obviously not willing to evaluate um, potential problems and to take responsibility for missteps. It's pretty reckless. Time to change your religion like you change your underwear. Change your religion, show God that you really care. Or change your ethical framework like you change your underwear. <laughs> underwear. Her faith in deontological ethics is no excuse. Unfortunately, insensitivity and reckless activism isn't all that vegan teacher is guilty of. I criticize people for throwing around the word, the word racist, like with the George Floyd song, it's insensitive, but it's not racist. This is different. For fun, I went to your profile and noticed that you have dark skin. Maybe you call yourself black. Do you know what I did when George Floyd died? I bawled my eyes out. I cried like crazy. Do you know how many Black Lives Matter protests I've been to? Do you know how your ancestors were treated, enslaved, raped, and murdered? Do you not know what they do to the animals right now in the industry? She didn't just see a person she had a disagreement with. She saw a black person she had a disagreement with and she treated him differently for it. She brought his race into the discussion and used it against him. It doesn't matter if he was on the right side or the wrong side of the argument. I don't even know what the argument was. You, you don't you don't need to use racism as like leverage in your argument. <laughs> it shouldn't even be an option. It's not a useful tool and I think it pretty like uncontroversially causes a lot of harm. Just to be clear, talking about race isn't racist. If, if he had started the discussion as as a black man who has um, ancestors who were slaves, who were slaves, something like that, then that would have been fine. What makes the action racist here is the different treatment and the, the presumption to bring his race into it. The systemic inability for people of color to escape prejudice based on their race in conversations that should be totally unrelated is a serious issue and she's perpetuating that. I mentioned this separately from her like general insensitivity and reckless activism because one, racism stands aside as like uniquely bad, I think, and two, in a deontological framework, racism is usually a non-starter. It's one of those things that's pretty much universally evil across ethical frameworks, right? Like, I don't think accidentally doing something racist is a smoking gun for her being a racist, but if she does it just unapologetically, that's about as close as you can, you can get. So Miss Katie, if you are watching that, I please apologize. If you do like one thing from this video, just apologize to that man, apologize to anyone who had to watch the video and apologize to your viewers, I think, for um, modeling that sort of behavior and making it seem like that is an okay thing to do. It's really not. And the reason that I use that tactic is because I was following a group called DXE, Direct Action Everywhere. And from the research, that's what they recommend is that we have to disrupt society, disrupt society to get them to think about what's going on. So I'm not sure if she's being inconsistent here and actually does care about outcomes or if she's just like repeating direct action everywhere talking points for those who do care about outcomes. But what she's claiming is just DXE propaganda. <laughs> there is no such research. She may have some like anecdotes, personal anecdotes that lead her to believe it, but that's not research. DXE makes arguments that reference some research, often within fields with only very tenuous connections to anything relevant to animal liberation. 
The only really credible points they make are with respect to nonviolence, which is a credit to them versus some other groups, and civil disobedience when it comes to confronting unjust laws, right? Open rescue, where activists break laws protective of animal agriculture openly and challenge authorities to arrest them so they can be challenged in court. That is good. But none of that has anything to do with what that vegan teacher is doing. DXC has arms that do important work, like people collecting undercover footage and, again, challenging these laws in court but also very dubious practices I've talked about before. Even when they're virtually free, there's not evidence of cost efficacy for controversial publicity stunts like this because there's no real research on the impact. It's undeniable that some DXE actions get a lot of attention. If it's a question of how loud you're shouting, that makes some sense, but only if you don't care about reception of the message. Okay, so this is from a video she made in part responding to me. So. Follow a natural vegan, follow free, freely the banana girl. I never thought I would hear my name recommended right alongside Freely's. Is it the end times? So yeah, this one is obvious for anyone who is familiar with Freely, recommending someone like that who espouses terrible diet information is bad. Nobody dies from being vegan. They might die if they're not eating properly, but they're not going to die from vegan food. So she said this in response to um, veganism killing people, and that's true. But it would be good if she really considered her own words here. People do die from not eating well, vegan or not. Not all vegan diets are healthy. A diet that is extremely low in essential fatty acid, in various vitamins and minerals, because it is so overly restrictive, unless you like overeat, then you can meet your needs if you eat a thousand extra calories. This is essentially what Freely recommends as the best vegan diet for everybody. This is particularly troubling in terms of that vegan teacher and Freely as well, because they're both reaching like a younger, mostly teen demographic. If an adult eats inadequately for a few months, even a few years, the results probably won't be that dramatic. But a child, a growing teen or a preteen, that can have serious irreversible health effects. If she is going to be so set on approaching this teen demographic, then she needs to be ultra careful about the nutrition advice she recommends and the people she recommends. Freely is an ethical vegan. I don't question that at all. And I'm sure, you know, that's, that's why that vegan teacher is recommending her. But being an ethical vegan doesn't mean it's safe to recommend her, right? It doesn't mean she is ethical in other aspects of her life. It doesn't mean her advocacy is ethical. Anyway, that vegan teacher has also recommended What the Health, which is pretty full of pseudoscience, not as bad as what Freely recommends, but still heavy on the, the low fat and um, some, you know, vegan nutrition dogma. I have a video on that if you're interested. She mentioned chronometer briefly in one video that I saw, but look, if she's targeting this young demographic, you, you cannot, <laughs> you cannot tell kids to use chronometer they're kids. They often think they're invincible. They will live on Coke and Pringles. They're not responsible enough to track their nutrition on their own. I'm generalizing. Obviously, there are some very, very smart, very wise beyond their years children who will, but most will not. They're not going to be able to track their nutrition and their parents don't know dick about vegan nutrition. They're not going to be able to help them. But regardless, e even if that vegan teacher hadn't recommended Freely or some of this other shady sort of um, diet vegan nutrition sources, I think she's still being reckless by not talking about vegan nutrition and not by not recommending good sources, veganhealth.org, theveganrd.com. You cannot target children and say, go vegan, go vegan, go vegan without explaining how to go vegan and how to do that healthfully and successfully. I mean, you shouldn't do it with adults either, but particularly with teenagers. If you don't care about the kids, you know, she's pretty misanthropic, so... I don't know, but if she doesn't, then think about the animals. The animals need these kids to stick to the diet. If they don't stick to it and go on to talk about how dangerous it was and how sick it made them. But again, she doesn't care about consequences. So <laughs> none of this matters, I guess. So that vegan teacher has claimed repeatedly that not just veganism, but animal rights activism is the moral baseline. I believe this is the first time I'd ever heard that actually. It's pretty absurd. It's pretty perplexing. I couldn't find anywhere her um, explaining this or trying to justify this. The only place I've found it is from direct action everywhere. So I'm guessing that's where she got it from. So I will just go straight to DXE and see what they have to say about it. 
Suppose you come across a mob of people beating a child with a stick. Join us, they say. It's fun. The first response to the mob is, everyone else is doing it, so I might as well too. And who knows, maybe they're right that it's fun. This is the unthinking reaction that most people give to the brutal violence raging against animals. While we often condemn them for this choice, moreover, it's important to note that most people don't make a real choice. They never say to themselves, between torturing and slaughtering billions of gentle baby animals or not torturing and killing, I choose torture. As with other historical participants in atrocity, they simply accept the way things are. They are products of the system to which they were born. So that last part was like halfway pragmatic. Hopefully that vegan teacher will take it to heart and like stop calling meat-eating parents horrible. And encourage the class to watch these so that they could learn how horrible people um, their parents are for paying into these cycles of violence. I get that this is like a skit, but she says similar things when not in character, like saying being vegetarian is terrible. And by the way, being vegetarian is terrible. I mean, it's not surprising to me. In my experience, misanthropic vegans tend to be pretty deontological in their reasoning, in their advocacy. Why would they not be? Their worldview tends towards black and white, good and bad thinking. Vegans are good, non-vegans are bad. Anyway, back to DXE. The second response to the mob is, I'm not comfortable with beating a child. It's wrong, so I'm not going to join you. This is veganism, non-participation in a violent practice. And while it's certainly preferable to beating the child ourselves, it still falls far short of the moral baseline. Because where we have the power to take some action to help someone who is being abused, whether a human or non-human child, we have a duty to do so. Indeed, many jurisdictions make it a crime when we fail to act to assist a helpless person in need. In consequentialism, there are essentially better and worse choices, and they exist along a continuum. The obligation to make those choices depends on the harm prevented or the good done relative to the effort or risk, and this also exists along a continuum. There are ways to talk about who is better or worse, a better or worse person, and there are ways to identify a kind of tipping point between the two, which you could call a baseline, but it's it's not absolutist like this. It depends on context and circumstance. Absolute duties like this come from deontological thinking, um, and just because a jurisdiction makes something a crime doesn't mean it's unethical. Like, any judge is going to be pretty sensitive to circumstance. <laughs> any good judge. This is especially true when we have benefited in some way from the victim's abuse. For example, while ordinary citizens do not have a duty to intervene in or report violence, if someone joins and partakes in the benefits of such a criminal conspiracy, the law requires them to take action to stop that conspiracy. Yeah, because you committed a crime yourself. For example, suppose that you have been paid to be the getaway driver in an armed robbery. It's not enough to say, I won't participate after you've already been paid. After all, if you've benefited from the crime, you have a responsibility to stop it. No, that is just a heuristic the law uses. It's not morally relevant. <laughs> Your moral responsibility to stop it is identical whether you benefited or not. It relies on two things. Again, the degree of harm you can prevent and the amount of um, difficulty or risk that you assume in doing so. And again, this all exists along a continuum along with all the other actions that you might do. So in deontological terms, this is going to be very fun, there's something called a perfect and imperfect duty. Perfect duties are typically prohibitions, right? Don't lie, don't steal, don't kill. The deontological argument for veganism would be that veganism is also a perfect duty. It's something you always do because it's a practice of not doing something. It's a prohibition. Activism would be what's called an imperfect duty. Imperfect duties are things like helping people because you sometimes require help, but you don't have to do it all of the time. It's kind of like seeding a torrent. <laughs> Is this too, uh, too specific? Maybe. You seed a torrent because you need other people to seed to download, and if nobody seeded, there wouldn't be any torrents, right? It's about balancing what you need with what you provide. Linking that to vegan activism is incredibly unclear because the thing with imperfect duties is that they're vague and flexible. So, like, I benefited from being educated, but that doesn't mean I have an imperfect duty to become a math teacher and a history teacher and an arts teacher. Playing any one of numerous roles in society that feed into the whole satisfies the imperfect duty. So if you're arguing for veganism as a perfect duty because animals are people too, then you can't contradict that and make it its own category of imperfect duty. If we have a duty to help others, 
I'm saying duty way too much. If we have a duty to help others, that could be animal activism, but it could also be any number of other social justice causes, right? Going back to the teacher example, nothing in that would imply an imperfect duty to animal activism specifically. It would just be one way of many ways to fulfill that imperfect duty. So using a deontological framework, vegan activism is not a moral baseline. It, that doesn't make sense. As beneficiaries of 10,000 plus years of human supremacy and of continuing violence against animals both in captivity and the wild, we are all in this position. We are beneficiaries of a violent conspiracy. Our homes, our gadgets, our streets, and yes, even our vegan food are products of violence against animals. And simply attempting to remove ourselves when we continue to benefit from this system of violence falls far short of our moral duty. So yes, participation in violence is shameful and unethical, but so too is inaction in the face of violence. So too is veganism without action. This is essentially the same racist argument that extremist social justice advocates make, that like all white people have to be actively vocal as anti-racist activists, otherwise they're racist and bad people. We inherit the sins of our fathers and we have to atone, we have racial guilt by vice of our skin color or our heritage. Demanding anti-racist activism from white people to like atone for the genetic sin of whiteness pretty racist. Demanding animal rights activism from people due to the genetic sin of being human, pretty speciesist. As consequentialists or as deontologists, I think we can all understand that there are many ways to do good in the world via consequence or to fulfill imperfect duties. Using racist or speciesist rhetoric in order to put guilt on people for something their ancestors did or that society has done is just, it's, it's just so wrong. So no, being a vegan animal rights activist is not the moral baseline. Um, being vegan is not the moral baseline either. Like we can, we can all always do better. And just as an aside, again, like may, maybe we can stop denigrating vegetarians. We're all on this road together. We're all making mistakes. We're all moral monsters. So, you know, let's, let's be nice. Reach out a hand instead of a stick. I meant like a, like hit them with a stick, but I guess maybe a stick could be useful depending on the, the context. The deontologists don't care about context. So <laughs> the stick is either good or it's bad. Damn it. I'm going to watch the next two videos that you post and hopefully you're not going to be um, you know, mean or call me cringy. I would prefer you avoid that word. And to think that's what she was worried about. That's what she was worried about me saying. Um, no, you know, it's just, this is like the least important or, um, worrying thing about her. It's just, it's just humor. Some people find the stuff she does actually funny. Some people find me funny. I'm not funny. I'm cringy. I'm sure there are people who consider me pure cringe and cannot even like look at my face. That's just that's just humans. We're all cringy and weird, except for like Idris Elba. Is he the one exception? I don't know why I chose him because he's beautiful. Yeah. In all seriousness, I will absolutely stop calling her that if she wants me to stop using that word. She seems to be like hurt by it. And I'm sorry, I really did not mean to hurt your feelings. Hopefully in return, she will consider the actual impact of her activism, particularly the like rampant misanthropy and also again like recommending questionable vegan gurus with awful nutrition advice to literal children so yeah she asked me to stop saying a word and i asked her to change almost everything about her platform <laughs> seems equal there's more I could cover, I'm sure. Please don't assume that I condone something just because I didn't cover it. There's a lot. She posts like several videos a day, doesn't she? Or a video a day? I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of a lot of content there. This is just the stuff I felt um, was most important and that I I was, you know, equipped to cover from like a, you know, philosophical kind of standpoint and keep the video not like an hour long. I know it's, it's still long, I'm sure. And probably a, not a super fun one. I'm sure that was maybe a lot, a lot to deal with. I did the best I could. I hope you enjoyed it. Nonetheless, subscribe, support the channel, patreon.com slash unnatural vegan, onlyfans.com slash unnatural vegan. No boobies. So, so sorry. Uh, I have an Amazon store page with affiliate links to stuff I like. And 
yeah, thanks for watching again, everybody, and I will have a new video hopefully soon. Yeah.